this is interesting. So what happens here is the mayor of Wellington, Celia Way Brown, writes an open letter to Aucklanders. She says, goodbye, uh, house, um, house, house prices, big house prices, and uh, long commutes. Jacinda Ardern, did that make you actually want to sort of pick up sticks and move to Wellington uh, as an Aucklander? No, a, a little part of me did love, though, that the mayor promoted Wellington by saying, look, it's a really quick commute home after a night of karaoke. Like, that actually made it as part of her pitch. But no, it didn't make me want to move. But it, I do think she was making an interesting point that Aucklanders, via the transport and housing, are doing it pretty tough. But they're here because of jobs. They're here for work. And part of the point she's making, I think, is that our regions need jobs. Our region All needs right. jobs. What about work. you, Alfred? Did that make you want to move uh, to Wellington? I mean, is it, is it so unbalanced? Well, what do you I'm think? Well, I'm already there. 120 days of the year I live there as part of Parliament and part of our work there. And look, the truth is, is that. Wellington on a great day, Oriental Bay is unbeatable. It's a beautiful and city. A, and on a bad day? <laughs> well, on a bad day with the wind and the rain. I mean, horizontal rain. Have you ever experienced horizontal rain? Horizontal rain, it's, just, it's, it's an interesting thing. But look, the thing is, is that what she's trying to say, there's three things she's pointed out in her letter. Number one is around the size. It's around the compact city. There's, she's talking about the fact of jobs. You know, it's not just about the public sector, and it's also around a livable and fun city. We'll talk about some of that, though. We'll talk yeah. about livability. What about you, Julianne? I mean, you're a big, big fan of those small, compact cities, so would you up sticks as an Aucklander or Auckland-based, and would you move permanently to the capital? I did live in Wellington briefly before I was elected to Parliament, and it's a great city because but it has great public transport, very walkable, but... Auckland's where it's happening. It's going to be transformed over the next few decades if the government does this, doesn't hold us back I'll, too I'll much. jump into the audience with Damien very shortly. What about you, David Seymour? I mean, would you like to, just in your, in your fantasy, would you like to pick up the good people of, good people of Epsom <laughs> and fly them to Kandala? <laughs> no, yes look, or I, no? I, no, I, I, I move down to Wellington every week. Three days later, I come back. Had enough. You've had, um, you don't like it? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Well, why don't you but like there's it? There's one thing we can learn from Wellington. They've got a great waterfront. And I think if we were to learn something in Auckland, it is that is it the best use of 75 hectares of prime land uh, to have a port there? And cheaper, I think that's, that's one thing we can learn from Wellington. Cheaper housing, though. I, I cheaper yeah. housing, though. I mean, very good. I mean, I talked to, talk to a couple, right? They are saving. They've got about... Uh, Forty thousand yeah. dollars. They need to get to a hundred thousand dollars. They have. They've said they have no way of ever getting there. Mm. Maybe in eight years' time, they feel locked out so much so that they're going to move away from Auckland. Yeah. What do you say to that couple, yeah, Jacinda? Well, I mean, people don't move here for the housing. Eight hundred thousand dollars is an average price, but it is what's driving people away. Auckland is a fabulous place to live. It's where I choose to be. I love it, but. There are a lot of people who are now looking at whether or not they're ever going to own a home. Generation rent exists in Auckland, and it's a tragedy. It shouldn't be that way, and we can fix it if we're bold about it. So what can you do? What, I mean, you must have people coming into your office, Alfred, and saying, we're trying to save, we can't save, partly because of your policies. You're not doing enough uh, to help us get into a home in your city. So let's just talk about the KiwiSaver Home Start package at the moment, which is helping young families and also get into a new home. That's not well, enough, though. So, no, 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 hang on. That's, that's just that much. That's 223 applications come through. 193. Now, now these are facts. Percent. These are numbers. 142 that have been consented and paid for. So, look, that's one part of addressing the issues that you're Is talking about. Is it one about. part? What do you think about that, Julianne? Uh, it's a little t too little too late. I mean, there's a lot that the government could do to improve housing options here in Auckland. Just, just give Both us one. Give us one. Well, a what would you say to the young tax. couple? $40,000, they need 100 grand to get a 20% deposit. What would you say directly to them? Uh, that the government can definitely tackle this problem. It's, no, 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 no that's not bullet. an answer. That's not an answer. No, there's no silver bullet. But look, we need to close the tax loophole on housing. We need to limit foreign capital coming in, bidding up, and we need to provide more options for people to live where land values are highest. We can do that. We can do that. It's not rocket science. All the major economists say it's all, common okay, sense. All the major economists, David Seymour, say this. Close the loophole. Capital gains tax. Things like that. What mm. do you think? Oh, well, and you, uh, you, 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 can't, you, don't, you don't have your own house either, do you? No. But look, if you go and talk to the people in Sydney or Vancouver or London and ask them what a capital gains tax has done for housing affordability, they'll tell you. And, and nothing. Right. And if you go and tell, if you, and if you go and tell 
Uh, the people in Sydney, what happens when you start beating up on the people with funny sounding names and holding them Oh, no, holding come on, let's not get into that. Let's not get into that. It has not worked that. for them. It has not worked for them. The fact of the matter is that in Auckland in the 1990s, we built 5,000 houses per year. All right, in that's the last enough. decade, we've built 4,000 I want to go to the that's audience. the problem. Damien Christie. Yeah, I think we're going to be talking about housing again uh, later in the show. So I really wanted to talk about the big Auckland versus Wellington thing that Celia Wade-Brown's brought up. Yeah. Uh, the wind, for a start, she sells that as a plus. She says, windsurfers will love it. I mean, you know, <laughs> Simon Wilson, now, uh, welcome, we'll just choose you randomly. Yeah, yeah. Metro editor, but this is his last issue. And rumour has it that as soon as you finish up, as soon as the ink is dry on that last issue, you're back down to Wellington. <laughs> I'm not back down to Wellington. I'll be writing a lot more about Auckland, more in depth, because there's a whole lot of problems here. It's a great city, but it is on the cusp of not being a great city. Uh, can we just slag off Wellington for a bit, please? Because <laughs> I know, because you and I first met because you'd written an article saying how great Wellington was. I wrote an article saying call it, called Capital Punishment for Metro. Um, so... Do you think that Celia Wade-Brown is, is really pushing it uphill at the moment? Wellington has a really big problem that they don't have economic growth. It's a lovely city. I grew up there. I spent a lot of my life there. It, I love visiting. Uh, I like to get back up to Auckland afterwards, though. Ben Thomas, uh, you actually also just uh, you used to work for um, uh, some various government people down there. Um, now you're back in Auckland. Um, what do, you, what do, you, do you like it back up here? Uh, yeah, if, if, when I was down in Wellington, people would always say, you can't beat Wellington on a good day, and I still have no idea how they know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Wallace? Before we go, just around the panel, we've got some great institutions here, like the Auckland City Art Gallery, things like contemporary spaces like Art Space. But around the panel, is Auckland beating Wellington culturally? Yes or no? David Seymour? 100%. Okay, yes. Julian Gender. I Definitely with food because of all of the okay. diversity. Auckland, Auckland to Alfred Naro. 200 different ethnic cultures in Auckland alone. Okay, so that's three yeses, Jacinda Arun. Yeah, I, th I think it is, absolutely. All right, Wellingtonians, bombard us with your tweets, please. Uh, <laughs> at Backpieces TV, back soon. <laughs>